Welcome to session 2 of the Insolvency Professional Agency Regulations. We will now go to chapter 3 which deals with surrender of registration, disciplinary proceedings and appeal. So regulation 7 speaks about the surrender of registration. Who can surrender their registration? An IPA can surrender their registration. How do they do it? They do it through an application for the certificate surrender of registration. Whom should they give the application to? They should give the application obviously to the board because it's the board that's granted them the certificate of registration. What should they give along with this? The reasons of the surrender, details of pending and ongoing engagements of the IPs enrolled with it, details of their pending and ongoing activities, the manner in which it seeks to wind up the affairs. What does the board do on receipt of this application? It will first give a, within seven days, they will publish a public notice on its website and invite any objections. And objections have to be given within 14 days of the publication of the notice. After considering the application, then what happens and the objection, the board within 30 days approve the application for surrender of registration subject to conditions as it may deem fit. The approval will require the IPA to discharge any pending obligation, continue its functions till it is able to enable the enrollment of IPs enrolled with it to another IPA. The board after being satisfied that the requirements of regulation 4 which is regarding the discharge of pending obligations and enrollment with another IPA shall publish a notice on its website stating that the registration, uh, the surrender of registration has taken effect. Application is a must. Within 7 days, notice on its website. 14 days, objection. 30 days, accept the surrender. Place on website. Important points, star these 4 issues. Disciplinary proceedings. How do disciplinary proceedings on an IP? Based on the findings of an inspection or investigation or material otherwise available on record. Okay, three things. If the board is of the prima facie opinion that sufficient cause exists to take actions permissible under section 220. 220 is the disciplining actions. 222, 223, 224 which speaks about suspension, cancellation of registration, 3 times loss, 3 times gain, disgorgement and restitution. 4 things were covered under 220. 222, 3, 4 and 5. It shall issue a show cause notice to the IPA. You have to read this with section 220. How should the show cause be? It should be in writing. How should the show cause be delivered? Very subtle point here actually. Here in this regulation it says by sending it to the IPA at its registered office, by registered post with acknowledgement due or email. Whereas when you read the IU regulation it will say and email which seems actually more pro appropriate because normally these legal documents you would tend, it on, uh, tend to send it on an RPAD. Now, what should the show cause notice contain? Like any other show cause notice, it basically has to convey to the respondent that there is a certain provisions of the code of the code under which it is issued, alleged facts, evidence in support of the alleged facts, provisions which have been violated, actions which are proposed to be taken, consequences of failure to respond to the show cause notice and procedure to be followed for the disposal of the show cause notice. So you basically have to say I am issuing a show cause notice under this section of the act. This is your alleged offence. These are the facts relating to the alleged offence. You have not complied with this this provision or you are chargeable under these these provisions. The What are the penalties that you may suffer because of this show cause notice? By when must you respond to this show cause notice? And what's the procedure for 
disposal. The Shokos notice shall enclose copies of relevant documents and extracts from the report of invest inspection, investigation or other records. Now this is where I said you need to go back to 220. It says the board shall constitute a DC to consider the reports of the investigating authority. Where the board on receipt of a complaint or has reasonable grounds to believe that there is a contravention can appoint an investigating authority in writing. This investigating authority shall carry out inspection and can ask people to submit information, records and documents, can enter premises, take extracts and uh, then they have to return the documents back. This was there in the code under section 218. Now, so once the uh, that relevant portion of the inspection or investigation report shall be added along with this DC notice. The board shall constitute a disciplinary committee for the disposal of the show cause notice. Go to 220. It says disciplinary committee shall comprise only of whole time members of the board. Star this. The disciplinary committee shall dispose the show cause notice by a reasoned order in adherence to the principles of natural justice. They shall endeavor to dispose of the show cause notice within six months of the assignment. They shall consider the submissions made by the IPA. After considering the relevant facts and circumstances, the DC will dispose of the case by a reasoned order. What are the orders possible? No action. Warning 222, 223, 224, reference to the board under 225. Okay, so what's 222 is suspension or revocation or cancellation, 223 is penalty, which is three times or one crore, 224 to disgorge the amount. 225 is board to provide restitution. The order passed shall not become effective until 30 days from the date of order which have elapsed unless the DC states otherwise in the order. Star this. Order passed, who should it be given to? Obviously, it has to be given to the IPA and it has to be placed on the website of the board. If the order suspends or cancels the registration, the DC committee shall require the IPA to discharge the obligations and ensure that all its enrolled members are transferred to another agency. Appeal. Who will the appeal go to? NCLAT. Within 30 days of the order, and it shall be in quadruplicate, English with translation and shall contain the name, parent, age, description of each party. So that's your manner of preferring an appeal in part 3 of the NCLT rules of 2016. So you have to prefer an appeal to NCLAT. Okay. With this, we conclude this segment on IPA regulations which is what? Eligibility for registration. Just go through these matters of emphasis. Section 8, companies only can be IPAs. 2, minimum net worth 10 crores. 3, paid up share capital 5 crores. 4, not more than 49% of the share capital can be held up, held by persons resident outside India. Subsidiary through only one layer. Promoters, directors, persons itself holding more than 10% of the share capital are fit in proper persons. Form A is the application for registration, 10 lakhs. Form B is the certificate of registration, valid for 5 years, annual fee 5 years, annual fee 5 lakhs. 5 lakhs is the renewal fee. In that year, you don't have to pay. And... Uh, Overall time frame is 60 days. 
within seven days they have to acknowledge within 45 days you have to tell them look i'm intending to call this off so uh, uh, for within 45 days you have to give them an opportunity to be heard in case you're planning to reject the application within 15 days they respond within 30 days you give an order and uh, the cor is obviously valid for a period of five years and um, this is the procedure for rejecting application which is 45 days 15 days and within 30 days of the 15 days you either accept or reject then this is important approval of the board when a person other than a statutory body seeks to hold more than 10 percent of the paid up share capital of the ipa directly or indirectly please take away the words paid up it uses the term only share capital surrender possible to surrender application within seven days ibbi will place it on its website inviting objections within 14 days from the last date of objections within 30 days from the 14 days approve the application publish again on the website that the ipa has surrendered disciplinary proceedings by the dc based on investigation report inspection report or material otherwise available on record show cause notice has to be given contents of the show cause are specified shall be served by rpad or by email shall dispose of cases within six months shall give the respondent an opportunity of being heard DC shall comprise only of whole time members. Time period is six months. Shall dispose of by a reasoned order based on the principles of natural justice. What all can happen? No action. Warning. 222, which is suspension or cancellation of registration. 223, which is three times the loss gain, one crore. 224 disgorgement 225 restitution order of dc shall not take effect unless 30 days is elapsed the person has a right to make an appeal to nclat within 30 days in the format as specif specified in the nclt rules copy of the order shall be given to the ipa and placed on the website of the board and until the order takes effect everywhere Okay, they will discharge their pending obligations and ensure that the members enrolled under the particular IPA are transferred to another IPA. In principle, is a possible for one year, 10 lakhs. Anytime during the period of the in principle approval, they can apply for a certificate of registration, which is subject to all the usual conditions. And you don't need to pay the application fee of 10 lakhs again. For in principle, they talk only about subregulation 2, they talk only if the applicant is a fit and proper person and second, if the company after getting its registration will be able to meet the requirements of 5.1 which is nothing but regulation 3 infrastructure employment and conditions so they really are not checking everything so they are giving you an in principle approval and hoping that you would comply with regulation 51 which includes regulation 3 with this we come to the end of session 2 of the IPA regulations <laughs>